Good afternoon to you all. This is the uh, session on um, Central and Eastern Europe, uh, which is titled A New Agenda for the Continent, which sounds like a really wide-ranging uh, um, uh, topic. Uh, it's a uniquely qualified panel, uh, quite unique actually for Davos, because it has uh, three presidents uh, of three countries in uh, Central and Eastern Europe. And shortly to join us, the, uh, the Commissioner for uh, Neighborhood Policy and Enlargement. So very welcome to uh, all three of you. I, you don't need introductions. You're all well known. You're, you're a front, front page material. Um, the, uh, the panelists have, uh, have agreed to, uh, to brief uh, questions uh, and, and brief answers. And they'll ask each other, indeed, also uh, questions. The session will take about an hour, and we hope to cover a wide range, uh, wide range of topics. And of course, the focus, as the uh, agenda says, will be on the uh, emerging coalitions in uh, Central and Eastern Europe in their relation to both the European Union and, uh, and to NATO. Uh, how is there a, an, an impact uh, on these two uh, uh, organizations? And uh, what then is at heart uh, happening in the, on the eastern edge of, uh, of NATO and the European Union? Uh, recent examples, which uh, which have been mentioned uh, here in uh, in Davos, too, are, for instance, the uh, the Three Seas Initiative, uh, which dates from uh, what is it, uh, two years ago, 2016. Um, uh, if you recall, President Trump attended the summit. What was it in Warsaw? Um, uh, these are 12 nations which have basically a coalition, um, and uh, there is, of course, a prior. Uh, uh, there's a there's a prior prior uh, coalition which goes back to uh, uh, to the beginning of the 90s uh, when uh, when the Visegrad group was uh, created, uh, Czech Republic, um, uh, Hungary, uh, Poland, and Slovakia. Now all these alliances, these political alliances, are about sometimes about military issues, sometimes about cultural issues, sometimes about economic, and but largely also uh, about energy cooperation. So the question is. Uh, what does all of this imply for the European Union and NATO? And uh, the panelists have agreed to, uh, to speak briefly to that. Does it add to potential fragmentation? Uh, and how does all of this relate in the context of, uh, of the relationship uh, with Russia? Um, now, President of Lithuania, President Dalia, which is much easier to, uh, <laughs> to pronounce than her, uh, than her, uh, her family name, as she knows. Um, um, you are first to speak. So what is specifically so important for you in, this, uh, in these new uh, coalitions in your, own, uh, in your own region? Yes, we are 28. And it's natural that in Europe, uh, we're starting to group a little bit by interests. Uh, and it is sometimes Ge geographical <coughs> grouping, sometimes is free seas initiative. Uh, also, it depends uh, not only inside Europe how we group, but also our attitude towards the interests of uh, countries outside Europe. Uh, for Baltic states, we're already for some time cooperating very closely with Nordic uh, countries. It's so-called NB6 framework, and we uh, very much before each meeting, uh, formal, uh, we have informal meetings uh, to coordinate our positions on a lot of issues, starting from economic, from integrational into European uh, process, how much we want, how wide we want integration, in which areas, and how much we will support uh, integration process uh, up to the forage policy positions uh, on sanctions for Russia, uh, positions on creating uh, energy union, uh, positions on cybersecurity, uh, and of course positions on Ukraine. So from this point of view, it's nothing surprising. Uh, these groupings uh, are natural, they are efficient, because it helps us to to be supported, especially for smaller countries. It is important to have some kind of uh, Caucasus or coalitions inside. They're not uh, at all uh, against anybody. They're opposite. They're supporting uh, uh, and giving us uh, capacity to and leverage uh, to make uh, our uh, voice heard and uh, our positions uh, to be supported. And um, 
really, a, a, our group uh, very much uh, supports the new tendency, as I call Europe is back, uh, because uh, Europe today back uh, because it is uh, new leadership, committed leadership. We know that we will be going deeper integrating ourselves because the challenges of competition from outside, the challenges of uh, external threats, the necessity to be very fast in creating energy union, in uh, finalizing digital uh, union or market. Uh, of course, external disturbances with Brexit, uh, with uh, some uh, military uh, drills around our borders. And of course, the, the Ukrainian situation uh, is very much influencing uh, our European Union position and our willingness and understanding that we need to integrate. And uh, from this point of view, I'm happy uh, that already new leadership in France, uh, uh, the, um, the government in Germany, which is under formation, but we had what it was uh, said, uh, that uh, we understand that uh, in new world, Europe needs to be stronger. And for smaller countries inside European Union, for us, be we inside the strong ally, in, in strong union, is uh, a lot better than being somewhere else. Why we are supporting the uh, integration, uh, further integration, especially in economy, in uh, monetary union, in banking sector, in, uh, in cyber, in innovations, in even in defense. Europe is now becoming more and more united behind the idea uh, to invest more in its own defense, not duplicating NATO, just adding to NATO, and especially uh, adding in the areas where NATO not yet investing enough. I mean uh, cybersecurity, informational security, <coughs> battle against fake news. All this Europe starting to take seriously and, uh, and investing more and more. So here, our region, our countries, we are very much supportive. And there is no contradiction between any groupings or Visegrad or, or North and, and, and Baltic countries. So here we are very much united and it is what we're having this year as a new tendency. We are more confident, all of us in Europe. We know what we need to do and we have new leadership. So that's everything in place we need to deliver. <coughs> So what would be your priority for the first action step? I mean, this is a wide program which you're supporting. What comes first? Uh, defense or energy security? In our region, uh, of course, defense is one of the largest priorities because we are on the eastern flank of NATO territory. And having in mind and seeing the Zapot exercises, uh, it is clear that uh, for us, uh, security and defense, it is a priority and uh, cybersecurity, including new challenges, new forms of threats are a priority. And uh, we are very active uh, in European Union and in NATO, uh, preparing NATO summit. Mm -hmm. uh, and Lithuania already proposing a lot of ideas on cybersecurity, and these ideas are taken by Europeans and NATO. And we will be investing further because our own experience on the border is very clear that this is a threat uh, unconventional, but uh, this threat is even more dangerous than direct conventional threat, which is probably less, uh, uh, less possible and uh, uh, comparatively with the uh, unconventional threats. For example, for us, Lithuania also uh, energy security is important, not only <clears throat> from the point of view of nuclear plant security, but that uh, the nuclear uh, plant in Belarus on our borders is built by Russians, of course, uh, and it is, uh, could be used as nuclear threat, as unconventional weapon. That's a problem. And why uh, energy union uh, for Europe is the same agency, the same importance as any other union, and not only defense, but energy security, uh, unconventional uh, security, all this matters now more and more. Thank you. Uh, President Duda, this is a text which President Daria just spoke, which could have come from Poland, isn't it? I mean, it's, you must have similar views on this, or are there disagreements? I'm not talking about internal European Union disagreements. We, you and I will talk about that later, your Brussels uh, issues at this time, but the wider question why more, in, more integration would be needed, or do you doubt that approach? Thank you. 
especially thank you for the invitation to this very interesting session together with Madam President and Mr. President, uh, neighbors of my country, I can say. Uh, and uh, this is the good questions. Yes, yes. I can say in the most of these matters, issues, uh, we share the same point of view. Because, uh, because we are in the same region and in general, in this big polity, I can say we have, we have, we have also the same problems. So, when I look at the, um, at the, at the, at the, at our, at our situation, uh, when I analyze our history, I can say this is very important year for us, this 2018. Why? Because this year we celebrate 100th anniversary of regaining our independence. Mm -hmm. That was in 1918 and, and, and that was very important year not only for us, for Poland, but also for many countries in in, 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 in Central Europe. So this is, this is, the, the, this is also the very symbolic mm -hmm. year. And, and I think that, that um, it, uh, it, um, it needs uh, very, very, very specific and very ambitious approach to, to solve the problems, to find the way to solve the problems we have. So I'm very glad that we have few formats of cooperation, because this is very important, yeah. that uh, during last 30 years, we, we found a few formats of cooperation in, 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 in the most important matters. Um, one of the, one of the, one of the, 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 the absolutely most important uh, is, um, of course, security. Yeah. And in, a, in, in, in Central Europe, we have, a, we, have a, we have a special format cooperation uh, into NATO. Uh, we have meetings, we call it Bucharest 9. Nine countries from Central Europe had, has a meetings and discuss about the security, about defense um, annually before, the, the, before the, 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 the NATO summit. And, and, and we discussed about our problem, we discussed our situation in a matter of, 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 of security, in a matter of defense, and, 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 and we try to, um, to, to, to reach a, a, a common, common standing for the, for the uh, upcoming NATO, NATO summit. So that was that was uh, that was um, I, I took part in this uh, before the, the 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 NATO summit in Warsaw, and that was really very productive. And now I can say I'm sure that this Bucharest nine is very very good and 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 very uh, very very needed uh, initiative. And uh, what else? Uh, Second is uh, cooperation in, uh, in, in, in uh, which, which, which is, is going to, 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 um, to accelerate development of our countries. And this is the, 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 the this is the main, the main um, topic and the main task um, of the format we call 3C initiative. We, we, had, we had a few meetings and we discussed about the development of our countries, but especially development of e on infrastructure mm -hmm. and communication. Because we have the situation that uh, we are very good, most of our countries have very good connections uh, with the Western Europe and Eastern Europe, yep. but we haven't good connection between us on the axis north south south so so we have to so, so we have to we have to uh, to work on that uh, on that matter 
and and this is the 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 the, the main uh, the main target of 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 three C initiative. We discussed about the def developing of the, uh, the of the of the uh, of the roads, yes, motorways and and uh, and express uh, uh, roads. We discuss about the developing of railways. We discuss about developing of uh, gas connections, interconnectors, because we have to uh, we have to, uh, to 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 reach. Um, uh, also, uh, energy security. It's very, it's very important, and 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 this is this is the 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 the, 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 the main um, main fields of of cooperation and formats of cooperation uh, in Central Europe. But you have to remember that this is not something. New. This is not something uh, more, and this is not something other than uh, NATO or uh, European Union. Because uh, all we, we discussed and decided in 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 a in, in a format of uh, Bucharest Nine is only with NATO and for NATO, and for of course the, the result in our security and defense. All we all we discuss in in three C initiative is only for the de developing of our countries, but as a countries of European Union. I think this all goes in a direction of acceleration our development, and in the result. To 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 fulfill uh, in, in the, the policy of cohesion in European Union, because it's 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 not a secret that uh, we, we our our countries were behind the Iron Curtain, yes, and and we still try to reach the same level of development and the same level of, 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 of living in our countries as it is in, 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 in Western Europe. And, and that's why we cooperate. Thank you. Uh, the, uh, it, just on, on energy security, which is one essential component also for, uh, 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 of course, also for the Ukraine and, and also for Lithuania and other countries, that of course, is very related to uh, the current discussion uh, about Nord Stream 2, right? Um, I'm making that explicit because that's, I guess, underlying <coughs> this, uh, uh, this cooperation. Could you elaborate, just say a few words on how you see that developing? Because so far there has been more disagreement than agreement, I would think. Very long and wide issue. <laughs> but uh, crucial, I guess, right? But absolutely crucial, absolutely crucial. I will try to describe it uh, on, on, uh, from, 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 from the position of my country, yes? We need uh, uh, 15 billion uh, uh, cubic meters of gas uh, every year. Yeah. So uh, one third, about five, five billion uh, cubic meters, we have from our own sources. Um, uh, f f uh, one third, about five, next five billion, um, we, can, uh, we can buy through our LNG terminal, which we, which we, we built uh, in Świnoujście. On, on our Baltic coast. Um, and the rest, one third part, now we, we buy from, uh, from Russia through, through, through Yamal pipeline. So we have no, we have no, uh, 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 we have no um, other supply for this last Five uh, million cubic meters. Yes, we would like to diversify all supplies and all the uh, sources of, of supplies. Uh, and 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 now we we, we discuss with uh, with Norway and and Denmark about uh, new investment, about building a new pipeline from Norway 
um, uh, across uh, Denmark uh, to, to Poland. And, and, and this is one of the, of the most important elements in the matter of, of, uh, of, of, of energy security uh, this moment. Uh, problem of Nord Stream 2. What is the problem of Nord Stream 2? Why we are all against Nord Stream 2, yes? Uh, Poland, Ukraine, um, uh, Slovakia very strongly, uh, Lithuania. Why? No, because this is the way to, uh, to exclude our countries from supplies from Russia. And that, because, is, that because, is the core. It, that is the core issue. Yes. No, yes. No, 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 it, no. It, 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 we will cut back to that in a moment. You, you want to say yeah, something? Because the, because the because the the the, the capacity of uh, this new planned uh, pipeline Nord Stream two, plus capacity of Nord Stream, mm -hmm. it's enough to close Yamal. So that's the Polish concern. President, well, uh, uh, President Daria, you want can to... Can I jump a little bit on, on uh, Nord Stream 2? Really, we treat it as pure political project. There is no economic necessity and sense to build it. Uh, it will make Europe again fully dependent uh, and main large countries dependent on uh, Russian supply. Uh, it's nothing bad about Russian gas. We also buy as much as we need and if it is competitive prices. But the problem is that if you became totally dependent, then this becomes an instrument of influence. Usually, our history showed an ex and, and our experience that energy always was used as pressure tool, as influence tool, as, uh, uh, as uh, some kind of instrument of uh, dependency in politics, in economy. And today, Europe is, instead of creating energy union with diversified sources, again falling in the same path of dependency. That's a problem. We're not against Russian gas as, as it is, but we're against of falling Europe again back to full dependency on Russian gas supply. Oh, absolutely. I agree. We, we are absolutely not against Russian gas, but we have we would like to uh, reach, for example, the same uh, conditions of, of, uh, of, 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 of supply than, uh, of the, of, of the, uh, like, uh, for example, Germany. Do you, uh, can, you, can, can you imagine that, uh, uh, that uh, Poland pay for gas more than Germany? Why? Because we have no alternative. We have to buy this <laughs> gas from Russia now. So that's why we would like to, 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 to achieve diversity, because that will be the moment when we, we could negotiate as an as a, as a, as a independent country who, who can choose this uh, source of supplies, other. Uh, what, what at, at the core of it, this is, of course, that there is no unified uh, European Union energy policy, which we have been discussing for a very, very long time. And that brings me to and President... that's also against the, 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 the policy of, of European Union, yes. yes. Because it means domination of Gazprom. Yeah, yeah. President Poroshenko, uh, you, you are not in NATO, you are not in European Union, but you are in the same energy problem. Frankly speaking, we are in an energy community treaty. And we would be definitely in the European Union. And we are a European country. And we have the same well-coordinated policy. And uh, before speaking about agenda, about new coalition, about the future of uh, European strategy, I want to add a few words about the Nord Stream 2. You said this is about energy, this is about economy, nothing similar. All this about politics. If you see the figures of Nord Stream 2, there is no economy there, definitely. There is no explanation why Gazprom tries, sorry for this word, bribe some European countries with money to achieve absolutely clear political goals. We are proud together 
that we do a great step during the last few years for our energy independence and energy diversification. LNG terminal in Lithuania, bravo. Mm -hmm. Energy terminal, uh, LNG terminal in Poland, bravo. In Ukraine, who are more than two years not buying every single cubic meter of Russian gas, mm -hmm. receiving it through Poland, through Slovakia, because of the receiving the Norwegian gas, European gas. And because of that, we win Stockholm arbitrage. Mm -hmm. Stockholm arbitrage, this is not about the money. This is about energy independence. The main achievement of the Stockholm arbitrage is not even that we improved our financial situation. We stop anymore to use gas as a factor of political pressure of Russia. And we hate the idea to return it back. Mm -hmm. This year, we transit 94 billion cubic meters to Europe. This is a record high during the last years. And we will be more than happy to do it more. There is no any sense to invest dozens of billions of euro for nothing. We have, we European, have the most strategic ways how to spend this money. And there is another purpose of the Nord Stream too to divide it, Europe. Because what is the main achievement of European Union after the Brexit? Very tough test for the European Union. After the election campaign of year 2016-17, when everybody waiting that populist Eurosceptics be in power in Europe and promoted effective Russian strategy to divide Europe, to make it uh, weaker. And fortunately, all Europeans was responsible enough, united enough, strategic thinking enough to keep unity. And of course, Russia was very much disappointed in that. And uh, with that situation, Nord Stream 2 is a test. It's a test for unity of Europe, not and nothing to do with the security, with the energy security, with the energy, with the economy. This is clear. Limited. Thank you. Um, before we get to a second round on, on the panel, let me try to see whether in the audience there are questions or, uh, or quick comments, very brief. Uh, uh, please raise your hand if you have such a question. Obviously, the panel has been incredibly clear, convincing. No critic uh, comments. <laughs> no comments. Uh, um, I can only take that as a very positive uh, grading of, of the three of you. So let, let's get back then to the panel and... Um, uh, and go for a, a, a second round of issues, though we have already covered a fair number of them. And uh, uh, President Poroshenko, let me start with you, uh, because um, I'm sure you've had a number of conversations here in, in, in Davos uh, 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 differently from, from previous years, I sense that there is more criticism of, uh, of the Ukraine and of uh, Ukrainian political decision-making than before, which manifests itself, I believe, uh, in, um, in uh, uh, questions about vis-a-free um, um, tra uh, visa travel uh, for Ukrainians into Europe. And it manifests itself, of course, in the uh, complications you have this funding from IMF and World Bank, all of this awaiting further political decision making on your side. So, is this valid criticism? What are you going to do about it? First of all, for the visa free. This is a great success of the European policy of European Union towards Ukraine, towards Moldova, towards Georgia. This is a great success of Ukraine in implementation reform. 
This was 144 points in our visa liberalization plan, which, we, which was necessary to implement for Ukraine and receive very positive assessment from the assessment mission of European Union. We have ratified the association agreement, unfortunately not in November 2013 in Vilnius, as everybody wants. But from the 1st of September year 2017, they are fully in force after ratification, despite all the Russian efforts to stop it. For the IMF cooperation, it should be absolutely crystal clear. This is the first time in Ukraine. Oh, oh, just for a moment, before we go to the IMF, on the visa free travel, wasn't that um, uh, dependent on implementation of anti corruption institutions no. functioning? We have full list what necessary to be done, and we fully implement that. And we, and I am organizing the fighting against corruption in Ukraine, not because of it is visa free and not because of the uh, tranche of IMF. Because fighting against corruption is priority of my presidential policy. This is me who create the independent anti-corruption institution, NABU, National Anti-Corruption Bureau, and Special Anti-Corruption Prosecution Office, which is effectively functioning together with other institutions and deliver the first very promising results. Mm -hmm. And it is supported both by our international partners in inside the country. We provide judicial reform with the full reloading of the Supreme Court and the court system in Ukraine. And on the 22nd of December, I initiated in the parliament the new anti-corruption court as a finishing structure for the independent anti-corruption system. And coming back to the IMF and the World, uh, Bank. World Bank, I have here the very promising meeting with the Christine Lagarde and David Lipton, and with the President Kim from the World Bank. If you read the statement, very much satisfied with the results of the reform we reached. And we agreed about the, from the political point of view, everything is clear. We have a political will and decision is already made. From the legal point of view, discussion about wording, how to implement the recommendation and advice of the Venice Commission, this is the question of, of uh, the legal expert. And we hope to do that as soon as possible. Mm -hmm. But we are, I'm the only Ukrainian president who reached such a great results in cooperation with IMF because beforehand we have only one tranche from IMF and then stopped and Ukraine yeah. stopped keeping promises. We have now four tranche, three memorandum, which is fully implemented and fully uh, fulfilled. And we received uh, $8.7 billion in the most difficult time of our history. And I just want to remind you that we uh, do that during the Russian occupation, during the Russian illegal annexation of the Crimea, which definitely influenced on the living standard in my country. But at the same time, during the last half a year, during the last session of the parliament, we implement one of the most difficult reforms in the country, pension reform, healthcare reform, with a very strong anti-corruption component, Decentralization reform with a very strong anti corruption component, education reform, finish of the judicial reform, launching of the very uh, important law, law on privatization with the British uh, law system for the investor who wants that, with absolutely a transparent procedure, mm -hmm. state procurement law with a very strong anti corruption component. And of course, we should keep in mind what attack now Ukraine has from Russia, from the side of the propaganda campaign, from the side of the fake news. And I think personally that fake news and populists now is one of the biggest danger, not only for Ukraine, but for Europe. And I'm extremely happy that in all European countries and in the United States, 
question for the information security, question for the fake news, start to be the part of the national legislation, the point for the uh, European Commission uh, interest, the special NATO trust fund for the strategic communication and cybersecurity. And uh, this is their interest to, to try to imagine Ukraine is a, a country with uh, no success. No, we don't give them any tiny chance because we have uh, economic growth, 2.5% in 2017 during the war, when our main industrial potential in Donbas is occupied. We have estimation for 3.8% of the GDP growth in the year 2018. We have a serious program for the reform for improving the investment climate in the year 2018. And I want to thank our European partners for the very strong support of Ukraine, not only in the question for security, when we build up one of the most efficient army on the continent, but also on the reform. This is Poland who support us in the decentralization reform. This is the Lithuania who support us in the investment climate reform. Both of these countries support us in the anti-corruption initiative. And we would be very much welcome in improving the cooperation in this different sphere because this is the confirmation of our European vector of development. Thank you, President. Um, before we discuss Russia, which is uh, an important uh, uh, element in, uh, in the analysis which you, uh, all three of you have given, uh, there is a specific uh, question I want to ask President Duda because it's, uh, it's very much on, uh, on the mind of uh, other European Union member states. Um, you have a... Uh, uh, you have a very uh, important ongoing uh, discussion, I'll put it in a nice word, with Brussels, with the European Commission, about the rule of law. Without going into the details, there's a procedure, uh, there is uh, uh, a lot of talk publicly and obviously also privately. Uh, at what stage are we and how do you think it will be solved from your side and from the Brussels side. What I can say. <coughs> yes, we have what is the most important for me, dialogue with the uh, European Commission. And this is uh, really very important because, uh, believe me, this is something new. Mm -hmm. uh, few months ago, there was no dialogue. Mm -hmm. They will dictate from the members of, of European Commission. Now, situation changed a bit. I, 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 I can't understand why they were so unobjective in, in, in assessment uh, of the situation in Poland and, and our reforms in, 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 in judiciary. We establish institutions and we made a changes <coughs> which, which, uh, which, which function in, in, in European Union countries, in Spain, in, in Sweden, this is nothing new in European, uh, in, in the area of, 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 of European Union, in, 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 European, in European states. So I don't understand why, the, uh, why our uh, changes, our reforms are anti-democratic in Poland. <coughs> And the same institutions in other countries of European Union are correct. I don't understand it. There, there seems to be, well, I will not argue that case. I'm afraid there is the second deck, yes? This is, the more, this is more political problem than the problem of, a real problem of, of, of institutions, yes? This is, it, it depends who who from Poland you, you, you would like to listen? 
I can say that uh, that uh, stand, stand, standing of of uh, of, uh, of European Commission was absolutely one-sided. I don't agree. We are in uh, an equal European country. We are an equal member of European Union. We we are sixth country in European Union. So please be objective. This is one thing. Mm, and but but we but but I hope that we that European Union came back to the table of dialogue, and I hope that we will uh, that we will uh, that we will, uh, that we find the solution. This is not a very comfortable situation for uh, no. for European uh, Commission, uh, especially during the Brexit. To to create so. Uh, big uh, crisis, because in, in, in my opinion, this is a kind of crisis, of course, not as big as Brexit, but one of the, uh, but one of the crises uh, uh, touching European Union. But uh, the, dialogue is the uh, dialogue is the most important, dialogue and objectivity. Mr. President, uh, uh, you, you talked about f uh, fake, uh, fake news. In my opinion, fake news are, are one of the most dangerous tools um, of, of hybrid war. This is modern kind of war in, uh, in, in uh, contemporary, contemporary world. Because disinformation is, 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 is very dangerous. Well, I... I... I don't think you're implying that the European Commission uh, is spreading disinformation. I, 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 yes. I need to say before you before in you. In my wrap. opinion, in my opinion, European Co Commission was then disinformated from from Poland by uh, the, uh, by uh, by uh, current op uh, our current opposition in Poland. Yes. Who lost? Uh, who lost uh, uh, the, the power in the after uh, after uh, election in 2015? Well, maybe President Daria, you want to react because <laughs> obviously this is a topic which has been discussed not only in the European Commission but also in uh, the Council of Ministers and uh, and your various other informal meetings. Yes, uh, and uh, I tried to go out from internal affairs uh, and discussions uh, which have been mentioned by President Duda. Uh, we do have phenomena now in the European Union that some countries have different understanding of some uh, procedures and some uh, solutions. And we got uh, backlash between some member states and uh, institutions uh, in how to implement one or another thing. And uh, recently we saw examples that institutions tried to imply in force by force uh, some decisions which made very bad mood uh, between the member states and uh, gives very bad image uh, for population in some uh, countries. So what we are now seeking and we're trying to, uh, especially uh, from other countries, say that any question we need to return back as it was before. We need to find consensual solutions via dialogue. You cannot enforce by force anything in the European Union all decisions via discussions and joint solutions. And I'm not taking now place good or bad. This is not for me to evaluate. What is important for me as a head of state and neighbor, saying that no matter how difficult the situation is, we cannot blame and shame each other. We need to find together consensual solutions because Europe is about understanding and agreement, not about enforcing, beating, or using the instruments which never been used before. That's the main, probably, strategic and technical element because we have not only uh, rule of law questions, uh, in future maybe we will have migration questions in mm. Europe, and, and all these examples uh, say that we, we, we need to look uh, how to achieve uh, agreements between each other, but not making uh, bad blood between each other. A brief comment from President Poroshenko, and then I go to a gentleman in the middle. Yes. Fantastic. When I was asking year 2014, 15, and 15, 16, what I need the most from the European Union, 
what my country need the most. Money, weapons, advisors, definitely yes, all of them. But my answer was, the most we need unity of European Union. Because if European Union would be disintegrated, no matter on what, what problem, that not only weakening of European Union, this is weakening of the whole democratic world. We should remember that when we launch an open discussion. We have our own experience in the judicial reform, constitutional judicial reform. When we have everything transparent, everything on a live TV, every candidate with a polygraph, every with an absolutely open competition, with an independent expert, with the judges, do you know what the reaction was? We are not happy. Then, we are very much happy with the procedure, but we are not happy with the results. And only now, when we have candidate, we have applause that said, no, you were right. This is an absolutely bright candidate, uh, bright judges, bright chairman of the Supreme Court. We are very happy to cooperate with them. So everything is in dialogue. And please, the most important thing, what Dallas said, unity of European Union is our top priority. Thank you, President. You, gentleman in the middle, if you please identify yourself and a very brief question only, please. Thank you, Thank you very much. I am Jurki Katainen, Vice President of the European Commission. Um, I used to be a Prime Minister of Finland, and I, at that time, when we were together with Dalia in the European Council, I initiated, together with my Dutch and Danish uh, colleagues, the rule of law procedure. We, Commission, or the European Union didn't have this uh, procedure before, but we considered, it was way before we, we entered to any, any problems. We considered that we should have this kind of uh, procedure, and now we have. So um, I just would like to comment a little bit to President Duda's points that this is a problem with, between Poland and Commission. This is not a problem between Poland and Commission. If I remember right, 23 of our member states have indicated very clearly that we have a problem. We really have a problem. And that's why the Commission has introduced this dialogue between Poland and the Commission. The Co Commission is a working body. And I still believe that there is a chance to correct the things. This is not a blame game. We are deeply worried, together with overwhelming majority of our member states, the rule of law development in Poland. But as I said, I'm 100% sure this is a solvable problem, issue. So that's why we have high expectations of current dialogue. As President said, we have a good dialogue going on at the moment, and it's valuable. It's very valuable. And, and uh, only your government and, and the rest of your, we can, as, when we work together, we can solve this problem. If I may ask. Very, very yes, briefly. Yeah, yeah. I, would, I, I would be interest, interested in hearing your uh, president's, Madam Mr. President's views on the European Union in three years' time. How EU will look like in, in the beginning of 2021, uh, 21, if, if you could explain concrete actions, what has happened. Uh, on, uh, in, in three years' time. Thank you, Yuri. President Dieter? I don't agree. Sorry. I don't but, agree. But let's, there, there was supposed to be a, a discussion on the panel between the Commission, uh, Commissioner I, I, Hahn, come who is Poland President and look, Duda, just look, one moment. Look your own eyes on the situation in our country. Please, please, come to Poland. Please, ask the, ask the people. 70% of our, uh, of our population uh, is absolutely sure that our judiciary needs changes. 70%. Why? Because it works wrong. Too long procedures. People who think that, uh, the, 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 that they are... Uh, mm, hostages of, of, the, of, the, of, the, of the judiciary, the really bad situation. So we, we knew that we have to do something, and we promised, and we promised during last, during eight years between 
20, uh, 2007 and, and, and 2015. We will change it. So now, when we are, I'm a president and my colleagues uh, are, are members of the, of the government, Polish government, and, 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 uh, and my former party has, my, has a majority in Polish parliament, we do this, what we promised. This is something strange in democracy? President Duda, maybe, I, 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 I suggest not, Maybe that, in your opinion, but President not in Duda, mine. may I just interrupt you? I suggest that uh, given the, uh, the seriousness of this topic and also the serious remarks made by uh, uh, Commissioner Katyan, uh, I think it's useful to continue that dialogue, uh, but not do that in, 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 the, in this <laughs> panel. I, I want to use the last five minutes of, uh, of this panel uh, to ask you each uh, uh, to reply in one sentence, if you can, to two questions. One is, how do you expect the relationship with Russia to develop in 2018? And the second question is, to balance, what is your message for President Trump? President Poroshenko, 2018 and Russia. Really, very briefly. Please. I should be very genius to answer all three questions, actually, in one sentence. Because the <laughs> Trump and Putin and European perspective completely different question. And I try to unite it and be as much short as possible. First of all, I want to answer on no, no, the... No, 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 let's very stick to no, no, the previous no, question. Let's, let's restrict ourselves to these two questions. Okay. Because we have only four more minutes. I find out the way how to put Third question in the first two, so don't worry. Uh, point number one, future of European Union and Russia in year 2018. The topic of our today discussion is new strategy, new approach, new agenda, or even new agendas, mm -hmm. new strategies. Forget about that. We should have all European Union, all free world should have one agenda, one strategy, one voice, be as united as possible. And the basis for our unity is our values, not money. I'm absolutely confident that we win fake news and propaganda war, win information war. We would be winner in the hybrid war, because truth is with us. And I'm absolutely sure that after this winning of populists, winning of Eurosceptics, everything would be okay. And the only thing changed, Ukraine, in the year 2021, with the support of Lithuania and Poland, will have a European perspective for membership in the European Union. Thank you. For the President Poroshenko. For Time. the Trump. 30 seconds. What's your message for President Trump? Okay. I think everything would be okay. I will tell him. <laughs> <laughs> we will, we will Ukraine, tell him. Ukraine has an absolutely brilliant dialogue with Trump. I have a two full meeting, many phone conversations. We receive defensive weapon. We receive uh, very strong support from the United States Congress, uh, bipartisan. And we, are, we should be very optimistic, all Thank of us, you. including Thank you. you. Thank you. Thank you, President. President, I'll come to you with this last one. President Duda, what is your take on Russia in 2018 and what is your message? You have got 70 seconds. What is my message? Leave Ukraine. <laughs> okay, that's This a... is my message. <laughs> but. Uh... I would like to say a few words about 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 European Union and Ukraine and other uh, and other countries uh, and Russia and Russia. I I I I told it yesterday during our uh, working uh, working lunch. Uh, we have to keep the doors to European Union open for uh, new countries. We have to maintain. Um, 
open door policy. This is one of the most important elements of good future of European Union, in my opinion, especially during the Brexit. This is one thing. Second thing, Russia. We have to, to try to balance because this is our neighbor. So we should, uh, we should try to, 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 to create a dialogue on the low level, mm. but we have to, uh, we have to, uh, we have, we have to demand respect for international law, respect for international law. It's also respect for, for borders, not only in Europe, on, in all over the world. And, and, we have, and we have very bad examples during last 10 years. Great. Georgia, Ukraine. And your message for President Trump is? Good luck, Mr. President. <laughs> okay. Shortly after elections in Russia, of course, uh, what we can expect is predictably aggressive and predictably destabilizing. That's what we will face this year, and we need and we know how to respond. For President Trump, of course, welcome to stay on the world stage. Don't withdraw, otherwise there will be no great America. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, all three, for very candid answers.